Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. I just have Tom Likas! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, our bouncer, Dean J. D'Amelio, will hang up on you. He's now got quite the reputation for hanging up on people. He will hang up on you. In fact, he's so tough as a screener, he may hang up on you even if you have the absolute best comment anyone ever made on a radio program. He's very, They call him Alexiente, the demanding one. That's right. He sits in there in a little white hat, he's got a little mustache, and he is on the telephone hanging up on just about everybody who calls. Good calls, bad calls, does of celebrities call again. He just hangs up on everybody. I'm at the service center. That's right. So, well, when you call it, just ask for Alexi Hente. <laughs> if you can get that many syllables out before he says goodbye. one 800 800 Our Mexican friends will know what I'm talking about. And our Colombian friends. Alexa Hante is now the screener on the Tom Likas show. That's right. <laughs> Alita on the Tom Likas show at 1 800 5800 Tom. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? I'm a long time listener and first time caller. Great. I want to say my brothers love your show, but I have to say I disagree with almost everything that you say. That's how I know I'm doing it right. <laughs> Well, I want to know why is that you generalize everything that has to do with women? Like because you? because generalizations are generally true. Are you sure about that? Generally, they are. And there has to be a percent; otherwise, it'd be a fact, wouldn't it? What? Well, if generalization was really generally true, wouldn't it be a fact? No, a fact is something that's one hundred percent true all of the time. Two plus two equals four is a fact. Correct. Uh, there's a lot of women who are bitches. Well, now that's also a fact. Uh, but women are bitches, generally true. <laughs> All right. Well, you understand the difference between a fact and something that is generally true? Mm, sort of. Yeah, well, you generally understand it. For example, uh, guys guys will have sex with anything. That's generally true. I like sure, I agree. But you can't call it a fact because, sure, there are exceptions to the rule. So what? You know, I'm broadcasting. I'm not having a specific conversation about one individual. I'm talking about a broad audience of broads you. like yourself. I see. Well, I don't know, I've heard a previous conversation earlier here on your show that you were relating women to urinals, yes. and that's one of those things that I disagree, I strongly disagree on. Well, I'm sure you do. You're a woman. Yeah. But I really do believe that's how men should treat women, because that way they won't get jealous. They won't be demanding to know where you are, what you're doing. That way, when you want to do something scandalous, like have sex with your ex-boyfriend or your college sweetheart or whatever, um, then we won't get so upset. There'll be less abuse, less anger. Let's, I mean, they, well, the violence is terrible. Uh, the, this would reduce violence in a dramatic way. And if we just stop caring what you're doing and we go ahead and do whatever we want to do. And one way to do that is to treat you like the urinals that you are. <laughs> the, uh, by the way, that gives you complete freedom. Then, then when you want to go out with your 
tennis instructor, your ski instructor, the pizza guy, you want to get banged by somebody else, you want to have some jealous boyfriend getting in your face. <laughs> don't you see the benefits of what I'm proposing? Well, I don't know, because I believe if you're in a relationship, you shouldn't be screwing around with other people. Well, lots of people say that, and then they go ahead and do it anyway. That's true. Those people shouldn't be in a relationship. Well, they shouldn't, but they do get into them, and that's the problem. Mm. I'm trying to tell people, don't get into relationships, and then you won't be hurt. So you think everybody's just better off alone? Everybody should be a free agent. You know, it works in sports. We should be doing that now in relationships. Well, there has to be a proper time to, like, settle down. No. Uh, by the way, I am settled down. I just don't happen to have a female sharing my toilet bowl. <laughs> I'm settled down. I don't own a bidet, okay? <laughs> All right. I got you. I mean, we have to settle down. Why do you need a second person to settle down? Can't you settle down on your own? I've owned the, the house I live in for over 10 years. I have a good job. Financially, I'm well taken care of. That sounds settled down to me. So the concept of love, that doesn't exist to you? You can love people without moving them into your house. <laughs> and without paying all their expenses. So you wouldn't want to like start a family? Clearly not. If I haven't done it by now, don't you don't you think I'm pretty much uh, I've, I've voted with my genitalia? Okay. Well, I have to tell you, like I have a better understanding now, but I'm still a little iffy. Well, you're iffy in general. <laughs> and that's generally true. <laughs> All right, Tom. Well, I have to say, I am. I still disagree with everything you say, but my brothers love you, so you must be doing something right. That's exactly right, darling. Because <laughs> remember, they are in the target demographic, and you're not. All right. Well, thanks, Tom. Take me out, Kobe. Now. All right, Alita. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Nancy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Um, Hi. How are you? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. Anyways, okay, well, um, Hi. I have an issue, kind of. I'm sure you have more than one. Um... I don't know, well, just by being a woman, I know you think I have many issues, but anyways, the point is that, okay, like, I'm going to be getting engaged next week. You're going to be getting engaged. How do you know? Oh, because I know. And So, so um, what? You're, I, I, I thought that was supposed to be, like, something that came upon you, like somebody well, proposes to you, and it's well, a surprise. So your boyfriend said to you, next week... Starting next what Friday, we're going to be engaged. It starts in a week. So get ready, because you're going to be engaged next week. Well, no, he already proposed, but, you know, he surprised me with the ring, so now it's going to get sized. And well, aren't you engaged now? Well, technically, yes. What do you mean, technically, yes? How, when does being engaged begin? Well, to me, it begins when I actually have the ring on my finger. But he he bought the ring, and the only reason it's not on your finger is because it's not the right size. Yeah. So he bought the ring, he already proposed, and you already accepted. Well, yeah. So you are engaged today. Well, yeah, I guess, but next week he's going to make it official with my parents, and, you know, it's going to be, like, the big thing. But that's So your parents problem. don't know about this? Yeah, yeah, they don't. But they don't know. Yeah, not yet anyways. But that's not my problem. My 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 main problem is that I'm still in love with someone else. What do you mean you're still in love with someone else? Yeah. You've been seeing I, someone else while you've been dating this guy? Well, no, actually I was seeing someone for over two years and I really fell in love with this guy. But unfortunately, you know, he was not the right guy for me. And, oh, my God, I'm pretty sure he's even listening to your show since he's such a fan. And um, 
then he's definitely not the right guy for you, but go ahead. Well, exactly. That's why I'm saying he was not the right guy for me. Which so. is why you, which is why you're still in love with him because he's not the right guy for you. <laughs> which which justifies everything I tell the guys all the time. So the guy who went to the trouble of proposing and buying the ring and he's preparing to meet your parents, uh, you don't love him as much as the guy who's not the right guy for you. Which is why I tell guys you want to be the other guy. You don't want to be the guy with the ring. You want to be the other guy who's wrong for her. But why? Because that's how women are. <laughs> so I, I don't even know if I want to marry this guy. Well, you want what you can't have. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. <sighs> By the way, you're not even in love with the other guy. You're not in love with the guy who you're marrying, and you're not in love with the other guy either. Why are men jerks? Why are men what? Jerks? Jerk. Yeah. Because it works. We're jerks because it works. I mean, I look at this. Your ex is the one you're in love with. The jerk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why we're jerks. Because oh. it makes women like you want us even more. <laughs> you're laughing, but you know it's true. I know, that's why I'm laughing. And I, I don't know what to do. Obviously, I don't talk to my ex no more because I don't want to talk to him because I know as soon as I talk to him, I'm just going to go uh, fall for him again, which I don't want to do that. You've already done that. I mean, what, what you're, what you're going to do is the minute you hear his voice, uh, you're going to have to change your panties, and then you're going to drive right over to his place. Oh, my gosh. He is, uh, you are so, uh, you guys are so alike. It's terrible. And you're crazy about him. Now, all these people who say, I can't believe that any woman would go out with you. You see, y you are just like the women I'm always talking about. But I'm a nice girl. I'm a good girl. You're exactly like the victims I'm looking for. <laughs> women like you. Okay, so what do I do? Am I supposed to be a, you know... Bitch or something? Darling, uh, the, the real truth is maybe you're not ready to be marrying anybody. Okay. And just, like, not date anybody, not see anybody? I didn't say don't date anybody. Uh, darling, you're just not ready for marriage. I mean, I don't want to get married after I'm, like, 32. I mean, I'm 26. Well, why right. did you say yes? Well, he's good to me. He treats me good. I don't he's care, but car, you, but you you're know? not. Well, by the way, you should be accepting car. You should give that car back. Yeah, I guess. Yes. What? You gonna marry a guy because he bought you a car? No, no, no. He's really nice. I mean, he really treats me good. Yeah, you know? but you have, but you approve what I tell men all the time. He's really nice. He treats you really good, and that's why you have absolutely no respect for him whatsoever. I mean, you, you should come in here and just be exhibit A. You just sit next to me on a stool every day when I do the show. And when people call up to yell at me, I'm going to say, here's Nancy. Here's why I, here's the reason for the season right here. Here she is. Oh, my gosh. And plus, I was hearing your show yesterday. That's terrible. What you're trying to do with all the women. Oh, put them on the human grab bag. Yes. Yes. It's awful. I think uh, all the girls that are hearing your show, we should unite and do that to men. And by the way, there are women out there who, even though they hear me say these things about human grab bags and stuff, they want to be with me. Yeah, well. Uh, Just like I you would be if you knew my phone number. Not really. <laughs> That's what you say now. <laughs> so what do I do? Just call off my engagement? Or yes. Something? I'm confused because they, I talk to people and everybody tells me, like, oh, you should just stay with him. He's nice. Because they all, but again, they don't have to live with him. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you're sitting here and you're talking about another guy. Yeah, true. And you're not in love with the guy who's buying you cars and rings. You're not. I Say know. it out loud. Say it. Oh, well, it's true. I'm not in love with him. Oh. Yeah. You can't marry someone you're not in love with. And I know you don't care, but it's not fair to him. Yeah. And your friends don't care either. True. Well, then I guess I'm destined and bound to be single. Well, at least for now. Well, 
Okay, well, thank But you see, dear, you, you are proving my point. A man uh, came into your life who's good to you, nice to you, wants to take care of you, gives you things, buys things for you, loves you with all his heart, and you want the Tom Likas clone. The yeah. jerk. Yeah. I hate myself for that. But, dear, you should comfort yourself in the knowledge that most women are like you. Good grief. Well, and the yeah. sex, by the way, let me just add, Nancy, you didn't have to tell me. The sex with the other guy was better also. <laughs> Wasn't it? Yes, it was great. It was very great. Way better than this guy. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, this my ex, I mean, he just opened my eyes to a whole different world. Right. And then the nice guy came along, and how was he in the sack? I don't want to answer that question. He was not that great. That's all I can say. He was awful. Yeah. Right? Well, he didn't have enough experience, I guess. How old is he? He's 24. Oh, so he's younger than you. Two years. Okay. Inexperienced. It was not a great experience for you in bed. I'll bet you didn't even have an orgasm with him. Um, No. That's why you're thinking about the jerk. I love being the jerk who gave a woman an orgasm and then seeing her get married to the other guy who was nicer to her than I was. And I love getting that call three, four years later. Hey, it's me. Remember? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think I will do that. I mean, I can't. You know, it's, I've, it's very complicated. My family and everything is complicated. So I, Dear, I'm, listen to me. You can't marry someone you're not in love with. You can't do it. You will cheat on him. Well, yeah. I, I have been with women like you when they are married. Are you hearing me? Yes. I know what people like you are like. You will give it the old college try. And then eventually uh, he'll be uh, asking you for sex and you'll be faking a headache or telling him you're tired. And then eventually the jerk will, you know, be walking by your house or drop by your office or you'll run into him somehow or a friend of yours will tell you they saw him the other night or something. And pretty soon, while the man who's so good to you is sitting home watching TV. Maybe he's making you dinner or waiting for you to come home. You'll be banging somebody else. That's what's going to happen. Well, that's why I was thinking once I get married, I'm going to leave the state of California. There'll be other guys, dear. Yeah, well, then I guess I have a lot of thinking to do. Uh, I think you already know what you need to do. If you don't love this guy, you can't marry him, period. Well, thanks for your advice. You're not going to marry him, are you? I don't think I am. No, I really don't want to. I really don't. I just, I don't, I really don't want to do it. I'm not ready. I know I'm Now, and look, if the guy could give you an orgasm, you'd be ready. But he can't. Okay. I mean, well, how would I even teach him, you know? I don't think you can. Well, then how do men learn? They learn by uh, failing many times mm -hmm. and coming to the realization that if they don't learn how to do it, they're not going to ever make a relationship work. Men are under the misimpression many times that uh, women don't care about having an orgasm. Only men care about that. So they don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I can't teach them, then, you know, uh, there's not much I can do. Well, dear, <laughs> it's not, you're, you're not a sex education <laughs> teacher. You're not a therapist, okay? If he doesn't have his act together, you pick the wrong guy. But then again, only the jerks are good in bed, so what's the whole point? It's not like they're ever going to get married. 
<laughs> this is what I've been talking about here. That's why good people to get married to are so rare. Somebody who's good in the sack and will be good to you, that's very hard to find. Yeah. But generally the compromise is that one guy gave you an orgasm and the other guy gave you five orgasms. Okay, rather than one guy gave you an orgasm, the other guy gave you none. Hmm. You can't not have orgasms in your marriage. You can't. Yeah. I don't well, care. Your parents don't have to live with him. That is true. And if your father couldn't give your mother an orgasm, they wouldn't be together today. Well, they've been married for over 30 years. Your father must know what he's doing in the sack. <laughs> Nobody likes to think about their mother and father in the sack, but guess what? That's why they're together 30 years. Trust me. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> see, so that's the thing I got to live up to. You know, I eventually, when I get married, I want to be like my parents. Dear, uh, your parents got married in a different era. Yeah, true. Times are different now. Yeah, but I mean, what do you do with a traditional family? You know, tell them I'm non-traditional, leave yeah. me alone. Tell them, you got to tell them it's a new world. It's the 21st century. It's the United States. This is the land of Facebook and MySpace and cell phones and email and text messaging and being on classmates.com and finding all the people you went to high school with who you boned or didn't bone. But would like to bone. I mean, times have changed. Mm, yes, they have. You know, back when I was a kid, my mom used to talk about guys she went to school with, and my mom was not very explicit. And never, but, I mean, you could tell. She used to say, well, I wonder what ever happened to so-and-so. There was no classmates.com. There was no Google. Even if you had some <sighs> moment where you're thinking about somebody from the past, you didn't know where they were, and you couldn't find them. Yeah. Now people get on the Internet, they can find anything they want. Yes, that is true. And yeah. so times have changed. And people have, you know, three phone numbers, or they've got uh, seven email addresses, and they've got their company email address, and they've got text messaging. Anybody can do what they want without the other person knowing. It's a different world. It's not like when your parents got married. Yeah, well, I... True. Well, I guess I'm going to break someone's heart tonight. Let us know how you make out, okay? Okay. All right, Nancy. Good luck. Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh. Tom Likis. Hey. I think women would enjoy sex more if they got into... The Tom Likis Show. Woo! Show, yes, it is. At 1 800 Tom, that is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Just having a good time being at work today. This is fun. It is indeed. Kai on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, hi. Um, oh, I, hi. <laughs> sorry, I just, I've been on hold for about an hour and a half, but. Um, I had an a issue with... Nobody Amazon. wants to eat at an empty restaurant, Kyle. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'll tell my, you what. You want to get on the air right away? Uh, call, yeah. yeah. You call ESPN Radio. Oh, oh, Eight okay. chairs, no uh, waiting. I'll tell you what. You call in, you will get in on half a ring. They will put you on the air. I would guess you could get on the air in about 30 seconds. You're probably right. No one listens to that crap. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, you want to be on a show where you have to wait 90 minutes to get on the air? Or do you want to call in and get on the air within five seconds? No, I'd rather be on your show, Tom. Just remember, the longer it takes you to get on the air, the more people are going to hear what you have to say. I guess you're right. I mean, think about it for a second. Yeah, I know a lot of people listen to your show. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I mean, I don't even know what's on these stations, these all sports stations. You can get get on, call in. You will get on the air right now, but you'll be talking to yourself. <laughs> You're right. Um, my uh, 
my problem is with uh, my older brother. Oh, you got a lot of problems. But go ahead. What is it? Uh, my older brother and his wife. They're, they're only uh, well. She's nineteen. I think she's just turning twenty, and he's twenty-two, and they just got married about a half a year ago. Oh Christ! Yeah. Right. Right. So it's right up your alley. But anyway, um, they they're really religious. They're both Christians, and they they're very strong about their religion. And uh, I live with my girlfriend. I'm only nineteen. She's nineteen. Uh, we have. Why, no... why are you living with your girlfriend? Uh, it's hard to explain. I mean, no, no, you can explain it. Go ahead and tell me the reason. Well, we both had kind of issues at home. We were dating uh, about six or seven months uh, through high, through the end of high school, and so love had nothing to do with it. She was having problems with her parents. You were having problems with your parents. So you decided to move in together, not because you love each other, but because you had problems at home. I guess you could probably say that, but I mean, there was love. We have been in love, but um, you know, I mean, I mean, in defense of it, it's not. It's not like we're trying to. It's not like we're trying to make some big fancy dream marriage, family, and all that stuff. We're we're pretty open minded. We're living together. We're in love. We have a decent relationship, you know. But my, do you use my, a condom? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I do. But you do. But she, yes, but she she's also on birth control. I will never but, believe that. You don't believe that, huh? No, and then when you say, but she's on birth control, that means you use a condom sometimes, and sometimes you don't. That's true. Yeah, well, stop doing that. You're right. Use it all the time. You're right. I Trust definitely, me. I definitely, do not want, I definitely do not want children. That's not anything that I am and planning on. I, I have. Uh, well, I yeah, wanna... that's just the point. You're not planning on it, but by not using a condom, inadvertently, you are planning on it. I guess. Yeah, you're right. Stop not, doing it. I'm... Okay. All right. Anyway, go ahead. Well, um, it, the issue is that um, within the last year or so, they got married, and they and, um, I, and they, they just really put a lot of pressure on us. We're, we're all really kind of friends. We all hang out. Uh, we live in the same apartment complex. You know, we have barbecues together every other day almost, and... And we all get along, but the only issue is that they're always trying to preach to us and tell us that we need to have more religion in our life and, and go even further in, into it now. On Thanksgiving, it got the worst, where they were actually telling my girlfriend while I was in another room that they know deep down in their hearts that that I still believe in God from my my religion I had as a child, and I don't, but they have convinced I do, and they made a big old deal out of it. and. We got my whole half, my dad's side of the family, and everyone ganged up on me. Totally ruined my holiday. And you know, why did, I, I why did the dad? Why did your dad's side of the family gang up on you? Why, what happened with your dad? Is he the religious one? Oh yeah, yeah. The, that whole side of my family—they're all strong Catholic. I understand Catholic Christian, but you know, they're all really religious, and and I'm pretty much the only one that's not. So it's, it was just like a. It was like a ticking bomb for that conversation, you know, and it was pretty bad. And why don't I, I you just, just tell? You're an adult. Why don't you just tell them this is not open for discussion? Oh, I, and I tried. It was just, and it's bad, you know. And the, and the problem with it, the problem with it is that, you know, I, they're just so convinced that they're blind to the fact of that it's wrong to bring that kind of stuff up. Like they really. Well, you're like gonna have to. You're gonna have to housebreak them like puppies. When the subject comes up, take your girlfriend and leave. Yeah. And you tell them the next time you come over, if they bring it up, you're going to do the same thing again. And mean it. Yeah. Okay. Are you capable of doing that? Yeah, I can do that. That's what you have to do. They might threaten not to talk to you, or they might uh, get angry. You have to be prepared for that. You know what? I'm an atheist. I've been an atheist my whole life. And uh, my mom was Catholic, and uh, you know what? You have to you have to stand up for what you believe in, and sometimes that means people get angry at you. You hear people get angry at me all the time for things I believe. Yeah. Well, you have to be prepared to defend your position. Part of defending your position is this: you don't have to listen to anything anybody is saying, and you, that you've already heard it, and and you don't want to hear it anymore. So you have to stand up and say, this conversation is over, and uh, I'm leaving. Next time you bring it up, I'm leaving again. Okay. Eventually, they're going to get the idea that every time they bring it up, you're going to leave. Yeah. It just really sucks that that's what I'm going to have to do, you know? Well, that, you know what? That's what, 
when you hold the unpopular position, that's the position you're in. Well, that's really great, isn't it? That's how it is. <laughs> Get used to it, son. I've, I've had it my whole life. Uh, I just thought maybe there was some kind of no. trick to it or something. Yeah, I gave you the trick. Yeah, I guess. Uh... At some point, they'll stop. But if you stand there and listen to them, they think they're making progress. And they definitely do. No, well, that's why you have to stop listening. Okay. Uh, well, I guess I'm, I'm supposed to hang out with them later tonight, so we'll, we'll, we'll see if that Tell happens. your girlfriend what you're going to do. Okay. That when the subject comes up, the two of you are going to put your coats on. It's kind of chilly in L.A. today. You're going to put your coats on, and you're going to leave. Before you leave, you're going to say, I don't want to hear about this subject anymore. And the next time I'm here, if you bring it up, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to leave again. Okay. After they get the idea that the only way they're going to be able to see you is to shut up about this stuff, they will stop doing it. Okay. Okay. Well, then that's that's what I'm going to do. All right. Let me know how you make out. I definitely will. Thank you very much, Tom. All right, Kyle. Thank you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Now, why did you have a child at 18? Um... I, I, okay, you're right. Uh, I had low, really low self-esteem. And I did it on purpose, though. You did it on purpose. Yeah, is that the dumbest thing you've ever heard? Yep. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show on 1-800-5-800-TOM. Wide open telephones with Katie. Hello. Katie. Hi. You busy over there? Um, we're on the freeway right now going to Vegas for my 21st birthday. Very nice. How are you? I'm great. Really good. <laughs> uh, well, we wanted to talk to you because uh, I wanted to know who you were going to actually vote for. Time for another edition of Chicks on Politics. Yeah. Well, I don't know who's going to be nominated, Katie. Uh, well, I'm voting for Hillary, and so are all my friends in the car. Well, you, you mean in the primary? Are you a registered Democrat? Well, I was a registered Republican, but I want a woman to win, so I'm going to vote for her. Yeah, but the point is you can't vote for her unless she gets the nomination. She will, won't she? We don't know that. Oh. Why? Well, who do you want to win, her? Uh, no, actually, I'm a John Edwards supporter myself. Yeah? Yes. Okay. But I can tell you, whoever I vote for, it will not be a Republican. Oh, I thought you were a Republican. Why'd you think that? I don't know. I heard it on the radio once, I thought. Now, let me ask you this question. You say you were a Republican, but now you want a woman to win. That's the only reason you would vote for Hillary Clinton? So you really don't care about politics? Um, I guess. I just want a woman to win. Do you know anything about Hillary Clinton? Um, I know that she's a Democrat. She supports um, abortion and women's rights. And she wants higher taxes because she's a Democrat, right? <laughs> so you're a Republican who's in favor of higher taxes? No, I won't. I just want her to win. I don't know. So you don't care if, you know, how did you become a Republican, may I ask? My dad, my dad's a Republican, and so is my grandpa. Of course. But my mom, who's actually a teacher, is a, she just became a uh, Republican. My grandma is a really big Democrat, though. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a family thing. And uh, how does Hillary Clinton stand on the war in Iraq? I don't think she wants it. No, do you, do you, does she or doesn't she? Doesn't. Well, has she said she would end the war in Iraq? Um, no, just I'm just thinking that she doesn't because she's a Democrat and Democrats are against the war, right? Well, they're not all. They don't all have the same opinion. Oh. 
sorry. Uh, okay. Has Hillary Clinton initiated any legislation to end the war in Iraq? What? Has she written any legislation to end the war in Iraq? Has she won anything? Has she? So, has? One word at a time, dear. Tell your friends to shut up because I'm trying to say this I'm sentence. I'm so sorry, Tom. You're breaking up. but I No, I'm not. Questions. There's people talking in the background. Okay, well, one quick question. Where do you suggest to eat in Vegas? <laughs> Another edition of Chicks on Politics. What kind of food are you looking for, dear? Um, really good Asian cuisine. Tao. There's somebody just said Tao in the background. Well, yeah, we have reservations there, but we want to go somewhere else on Saturday night. Can you meet up with us? What? Can you meet up with us? <laughs> oh, who's writing your script there? I am. No, no, no. I am. You should meet up with us in Vegas. You're repeating everything your friend is saying. I'm hearing it in the background. He can hear you, Stacey. Um, you should come and meet up with us in Vegas, Tom. Well, what's going to happen? Well, I don't know. I mean, you will, tell me. Will what do you, you want to happen? Will you all end up back in my room late at night? Oh, Tom, you're such a pig. Yes, I am. So the question is repeated then. Will you all end up in my room late at night? No, I don't know. It depends on what we're drinking for the night. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm not coming all the way to Vegas just to go to see a Cirque du Soleil with you girls, okay? Uh, if I come to Vegas, there's going to be some hardcore reason for going. Right, well, well uh, I'll get you comp tickets, Tom. Don't worry about it. Talk Darling, I'm in, the, I'm in the media business, okay? <laughs> comp tickets are not a problem. Okay, can you take me out Kobe style? <laughs> yes, I can. Here you go. <laughs> oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. She's so special to me. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Patty on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Patty. I'm calling to get your opinion on my situation. I've been married for ten years, have two children, and about a year and a half ago, I'm sorry, about three years ago. Um. I started noticing a difference in my husband, so I went, you know, to his work a couple of times to make sure there was nothing going on. And out of the few times that I went over there, I caught him several times attempting to try and talk to girls in the streets and, you know, asking them to get in the car if they wanted a ride wherever they were walking to um, and so forth. Um, after that, we then renewed our vows. Um, he asked for forgiveness. I forgave him. Nothing ever happened. He just attempted and about a week and a half ago, um, in talking to him, he finally admitted that five years ago he actually did, um, I guess, eventually get to where he wanted to and got about three phone numbers from some girls and says that um, all they had was phone conversations for about two to three months. Um, but he never had admitted to that before. So God only knows what he really did. He says nothing. I know what he said. But before, he told you he wasn't talking to anybody, and it didn't mean anything. Well, no, I, I caught him attempting to talk to these girls, um, you know, in the streets, saying, hey, you know, do you want to ride wherever they were walking to her? What's your name? Um, but I, it didn't get any further from what, you know, I thought until now that he finally admitted that he actually did at one point in time get a couple of phone numbers against the girls, did finally talk to him, and um, five years ago he was on the phone talking to girls for about two months, but he says that it never, they never went out and dated or anything. They just, you know, had phone conversations. Yeah, so what do you think about that? I, I don't know what to think about that at this point. You don't know what to think about it? You like it? No. I'm, I guess I'm just confused. Um, it, it's really not cheating. You think you think it's not cheating? Well, cheating really is whatever you and your husband define it to be. If you think that's not cheating and you can live with that, fine. I happen to think if I found out that somebody I was with was doing something like that, where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm just thinking it's, it happened too many times where he just said it was uh, it was an ego thing, just wanted to see if he still had it. Um, but I just... tend to agree with you, darling. The Tom Likas Show.